Hi guys, so in this video I'm going to talk you through a couple of examples explaining how to calculate the circumference and area of a circle. I'm also going to quickly refresh your memories on the different parts of a circle. So these are the different parts of a circle that you should be familiar with. So the first one is obviously the radius, that's the distance from the centre of your circle to the circumference or the outside of the circle. The distance from one side of the circle to the other cutting through the centre is what we call the diameter and that is very important for a lot of these questions. Then our perimeter of our circle or the distance around the outside is what we call the circumference. Um, if we move on to look at the chord, that's basically when you have a line going from one side to the other side of your circle but it does not cut through the centre is what we call the chord. That's actually kind of related to your segment because down below the part that the chord cuts off from the circle um, that's the segment part. Then if we go on to the arc, that's a part of your circumference, but not the whole way around. And again, that has some relationship to the segment, because if you find the area from that to your center, you'll see that that gives you kind of like a pizza slice or a cake slice, and that's what you call your sector. And then something that is important to know is the tangent of a circle. That's um basically a line that runs um on the side of the circle it only touches it once and it makes a 90 degree angle with the radius of your circle. Um, so yeah that's your parts of your circle. Okay so the next thing I want to really quickly explain then is what the relationship is between the circumference of the circle and the diameter. So anyone who studied circles will remember this uh, word pi uh, that comes up but a lot of students might not necessarily understand what it what it means or what it represents okay excuse my very dodgy drawing of a circle but you get the idea so the distance um from one side of my circle to the other is what we call my diameter and then the distance around the outside of my circle is what we call our circumference now, um, in class, we did an experiment related to this where basically the students measured the circumference, so the outside distance of my circle using a string and then stretched it out on a ruler. And then they measured from one side of the circle to the other on the diameter line and they divided. So they did circumference divided by diameter and they noticed that they all got answers that were in and around 3.14. Okay, so the next thing we need to be aware of then is that that wasn't a coincidence. Even though students measured loads of different uh, circles, they kept getting in and around three. So that's what was discovered um, thousands of years ago, that this number 3.14 was actually related to an irrational number, which we now call pi. Now, pi is an irrational number, which means that it goes on forever so even though a lot of books or you'll see it written as 3.14 that's just pi rounded to two decimal places so the best way to keep pi accurate is to use the pi button on your calculator because that gives it to like seven or eight decimal places which is a little bit more um accurate the only thing i just want to mention at this point is that if they say in a question let's say you had to do something where you did five multiplied by pi if they say to leave your answer in terms of pi, that means they literally just want you to leave pi as it is as a symbol, okay? So if you're asked to leave it in terms of pi, that's what you're going to write it down as. However, if they say to round your answer to two or three decimal places, you're going to go on your calculator, you're going to multiply five by pi, and you're going to press your S to D button, and then you'll get your answer that way. So it's just to be aware that depending on the question um, and how it's asked, your answers might be slightly different. So if I'm asked to round that to five, or sorry, to two decimal places, I would write down 15.71. So again, just to be looking at your question and what's asked. Okay, so using our logic then from what we said we discovered in our experiment, that when you divided um, the diameter into your circumference, we kept getting around 3.14 and that's related to pi. So let's go the other way then. So let's say we know the diameter, but we don't know the circumference. How can we figure it out? So hopefully from that experiment, students were able to figure out, oh, right, I just have to multiply the diameter by pi and then that will give me the circumference. So there is an official formula to help us so that we don't need to necessarily always remember that. So the formula is, which you do need to know, is that circumference is equals to pi multiplied by d. Or you will sometimes see it written as pi d, which means the same thing when they're stuck together. It just means multiply.
So in this question, to calculate the circumference, we just have to do pi multiplied by the diameter, which is 7 centimetres. And let's say in this question we're asked to round it to two decimal places. So on our calculators we're going to do pi multiplied by 7. And that's going to give me 21.99114 etc etc etc. Let's say we're asked to round that to two decimal places. So we'll just write down 21.99 centimetres. Okay, not centimetres squared because it's the circumference which is just like the perimeter of your circle. So in this example we're asked to again calculate the circumference and this time we're being given that the radius is equals to 6 centimetres. Now the big mistake at this point is students just say okay we just need to multiply 6 by pi because that's what we did in the last question but remember we gave the formula that circumference is equals to pi multiplied by d. However, that's not d, that's the or, which is the radius. Now, there is another version of this formula, so I'm going to give you both of them, which they both mean the exact same thing. If we think about it, the diameter is just the same as multiplying the radius by 2, because it's halfway across. So the other version of this formula, which you will see written in books, is 2 pi or, which just means 2 multiplied by pi multiplied by the radius. The reason why there's two there is because the radius is obviously half the length of the diameter. You don't need to learn both of them off, but they both mean the exact same thing. So if we even go back to the original formula that I gave you, we can say, okay, well, I don't know the radius, or sorry, I know the radius is six, so therefore the diameter has to be 12. And now I just use what Anya's already shown us. So it will be C is equals to pi multiplied by D, which is 12. And in this question again we're asked to round it to uh, two decimal places so pi multiplied by 12 is going to give me 37.69911 blah 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 so two decimal places is going to be 37.70 centimeters so here we want to actually calculate the area of a circle so we need our formula so the area of a circle is equals to pi or squared. Now when I'm teaching this for the first time I like to write it out it's slightly easier to look at so it's pi multiplied by or multiplied by or. The reason I write it out like that is because sometimes students make the mistake of instead of squaring the radius they just multiply it by 2 which is completely wrong. So just make sure that you remember it's squared and not multiplied by 2. So let's have a look at a question. Let's say we're asked to calculate the radius of this circle, or sorry, the, cir the area of this circle with a radius of 5 centimetres. So we're going to uh, say, okay, what do I know right now? I know the radius is equals to 5. Brilliant, I can use this formula straight away. So I'm going to say A is equals to pi multiplied by 5 multiplied by 5, not 5 multiplied by 2. And again, in this one, let's say that we need to round it to two decimal places. So my answer is going to be 78.54 centimetres squared. Let's try another question where we're asked to work out the area. Um, and then this question, we are told that the diameter is equals to 22 centimetres and we're asked to work out the area of this circle. So for this one again, we need to think about our formula for area and we know A is equals to pi multiplied by or multiplied by or. However, at the moment I know D is equals to 22. So I need to change or use D to help me find or. So therefore the diameter is double the radius. So we divide it by two. Therefore the radius is 11 centimetres. So I'm going to put that into my formula then. So therefore pi multiplied by 11 multiplied by 11. And let's do that to two decimal places. And your answer is going to be 380.13 centimetres squared because it is um, area and not perimeter. Okay guys, so I'd like you to pause the video, have a go at these two questions where you're asked to work out the area and perimeter of the circles and round all your answers to two decimal places. When you're doing this in your copy, just make sure you're also thinking about the correct units to use. 
then you can play the video and check that you've done it correctly. Okay, so hopefully you've had a go at this. Let's have a look at what we need to do to calculate the answers. So first of all, we want to calculate the area and perimeter of circle number one, where we are told that the radius, so I'm going to write that down, or is equals to four meters. So to calculate the circumference, we know that it's pi multiplied by d. Now at the moment, I don't know d, I know or, so therefore d is going to be double that, so it's going to be eight meters. So I can then sub that into my formula, pi multiplied by 8, and we've been told to round that to two decimal places. So on my calculator, I'm going to do pi multiplied by 8, and my S to D button, that's going to give me 25.13 metres. Again, be very careful of your units. And then for the area, we know area is equals to pi multiplied by or multiplied by or. And I know or is equals to 4, so I'm just going to substitute that in. And again, on my calculator, we're going to do pi multiplied by 4 multiplied by 4. And we're going to round it to two decimal places. And that's going to give me 50.27, because I've rounded it up, meters squared, because it's area. Let's do the same then for your second circle. So in this circle, I know that uh, diameter is equals to 16. So then straight away I might write down then the radius is going to have to be 8. And we're going to go and use those formulae again. So for the circumference, uh, we are going to work out pi multiplied by d. That's going to be pi multiplied by 16. Pop that into your calculator. And that's going to give me 527 centimeters and area is equals to pi multiplied by or multiplied by or I know or in this case is equals to eight centimeters again put that into our calculator and that is going to give me two hundred and one point zero six centimeters squared